Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. With 15 master's programs, two new doctorates, and two certifications, Salisbury University offers a diverse and robust range of graduate programs for students who are interested in professional advancement and personal enrichment. Now, others from across the state, the nation, and the world will benefit as three of these programs, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Science and GIS Management, and the Master of Social Work become SU's first degrees with fully online offerings in fall of 2015. Here to tell us about the MBA is Yvonne Downey, the program's director. So welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. So good to have you. I'm glad you invited me. All the way from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me, why did SU decide to have an online version of its highly acclaimed MBA program? Honestly, the quick answer is we, it was market driven. People kept calling and asking, why aren't you offering an online MBA? Not which programs are online, but why don't you have an online MBA? So, and that's why, you know, we, we got those questions all the time. Right. So we finally decided, you know, let's do it. I understand that because I don't have time to go to yeah. classes during the day, but I would love to get my MBA. So how long would it take me if I started tomorrow? Well, you, if you were highly motivated, you could do it in a year. If you're highly driven and you are used to a tough, tight schedule, you could do it in a Even year. Even if you're working full-time, you think? If you're working full-time, I wouldn't recommend it, <laughs> honestly. But you could also take it at a much more manageable pace and do it in two years. Mm -hmm. Or in some people take... Some people could take three years. So, and that you know, would be all depends. right. You could oh, take yeah, the three absolutely. years as long as you get the coursework in. Absolutely. Yeah. What's the format of the program? So it's 100% online. Um, it is seven-week classes. And students are starting with an accounting class. And then between that accounting class, they're doing things like virtual teamwork, um, case studies, research, um, you know, lots of traditional things that you would expect in an MBA program. And then finally, they're taking their um, capstone strategic management class. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I already, since you said accounting, I already know I'm not going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> My accountant would tell you, no, no, no. Uh, now, I understand Purdue School programs are internationally accredited. Is that right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, we have our AACSB international accreditation, and I had to um, really think about it. It's a long um, acronym, but it's the, it's, I had to write it on my hand just so that I would remember, <laughs> Association to Advanced Collegiate Schools of Business. And these are rigorous standards that we are measured by um, and that we measure ourselves. We self-evaluate every three to five years, and we've been accredited in our business, general business, for many years but now we are actually we just received accreditation for our accounting and that makes us one of less than five percent of schools worldwide that have both of those accreditations so we are so excited about that it's, that's it's impressive. a major achievement yeah absolutely what yeah. else makes SU's program unique so um, one of the the unique things in the program is that we incorporate an ERP system in our teaching and okay. an ERP system is an ERP. enterprise resource planning system. Okay. So most organizations have some system that helps them do business, be it take a customer order, um, fulfill the order, ship the order and mm -hmm. systems do that. So we use one of the largest software systems in the world, SAP, to teach the, some of our classes. So that's really exciting for us. And we, we're in an, we have an alliance with SAP, so our students have the um, you know, best technology in the classroom, and so we're excited about that too. Now, how might someone benefit from earning their MBA online? Um, so really anybody that has an, an undergraduate degree can can take the online MBA but for any most, undergraduate degree any undergraduate okay. degree we have various degrees um, archaeology art history these are actual students that have come through the program would I be the first music major um, we have a music major coming up this, this fall yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but you'll be one of few but that's mm -hmm. great we love that um, so ask me the question again. So, so the track. question was, yeah, so how <laughs> might, might someone benefit from earning their MBA? So, online? oh yeah, this is great. Um, so if you're in an organization and, you know, many organizations tell their employees, you know, we want you to go and get your, mm -hmm. you know, further your education. 
And um, you can do that and you don't have to t take time off work to go and take the class. You can take the class anytime. Um, and if you're a parent like I am, if I were to go back to school and do my MBA now, you know, I could take these classes at five in the morning before the kids get up. I could take the classes after they go to bed at night. So it's so flexible. You're in charge of your success, basically. You're in charge mm -hmm. of when you go to class. So anybody that's that needs flexibility and convenience can, can do an online. Oh, it really does sound like yeah. a great idea. Yeah. What types of courses uh, does the MBA <laughs> <Your favorite>. require? <laughs> Accounting. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, supply chain management, um, corporate finance, strategic management, all the, the courses you would expect to see in a, a quality MBA Didn't I see program. calculus in the, on that list? Um, calculus is one of the classes that you might take before you, you actually uh, start oh, taking your Oh, so that's your not MBA. part of the MBA? No. Huh. So um, strategic management, we have a great class, my favorite. Um, it's really based on al analytics. So it's a customer relationship management class, mm -hmm. but it's predictive analytics, um, big data. So, you know, lots of great classes across the business spectrum. It's funny, I, I always feel like I operate from a vacuum because I never took a business course. I did learn from my dad, so that was a great learning source, but uh -huh. having not had any formal education, you know, it's something that really I'm intrigued by, I have yeah. to say. Who can participate in the program? Like I said, anybody, anybody that already has an undergraduate degree mm -hmm. um, and that really wants convenience and flexibility, they can, you know. You don't have to pass a test? Well, there's an application process, uh -huh. so um, you would have to uh, provide recommendation letters. As any any traditional MBA would require an application process, and um, you know it's totally doable. But not like law school or med school. There's not a specific test. There's a there's a GMAT exam there that we do um, we do require, okay. um, and you would have to study take some time out to study sure, for that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Now, how may our viewers get more information about this program? So they can go right to our website on mm -hmm. salisbury.edu, MBA, and all of the information, contact information, more information about the classes, or they can, you know, call me, and my number's on the website, so, yeah. I think it's a great opportunity for working professionals like me yeah. that, that want to have that knowledge base, but just don't have the time to take out of their day. Yeah, and this is the way to go. That's, it's you a know, great flexible. idea. Thanks for sharing that with us today. Thanks for having me. It's so good <laughs> to meet you. Thank you. And now here's a look at more activities scheduled for the campus in April.
And now here to tell us about SU's new online master's in GIS management is Dr. Art Lembo, faculty in the Geography and Geosciences Department. So Art, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. So glad to have you here. So tell me, what does GIS stand for? It stands for Geographic Information Science. And tell us a little bit about that field. Yeah, it's really, it's the study of uh, geography and mapping sciences blended together where we, we visualize and store and analyze and create geographic data. And, and pretty much everything we do on this planet deals with geography. Uh, that's location based, um, things that happen nearby, environmental issues, crime, uh, business uh, intelligence, all has a geographic component to it. So we actually are involved in the science of studying how those processes work and, and building models to predict uh, future events, uh, whether it be in business or within the, within the environment or crime patterns, uh, and then to uh, apply that to other areas of science. Gosh, it's really interesting. I don't think there was a major like that when I was in school. <laughs> now, in addition to having the GIS programs here at SU, I understand that SU is also home to the Eastern Shore Regional GIS Cooperative. What's that? That's right. Yeah, the, the ESRGC is really a, uh, an outreach center of excellence uh, from the university that focuses on building uh, geographic information uh, for the Eastern Shore. At least that's how we started. But it's now grown to uh, doing work nationally and even internationally now. So we have uh, 12 full-time employees. They're all SU alumni. And what's fun about that is we, we also have many of our students in the geography program who are studying GIS who will then work as interns in the ESRGC. And many of them have been hired. So, so what's great about it is our students are working in a real laboratory, a real office setting uh, at, as their undergraduates, so when they graduate from college, they can actually say they've had some experience working in a real-world setting, solving geographic problems. Are they employed by SU? Some of our students are um, have internships that are related to credit, but others are on actual uh, sponsored research where we actually get paid and they get a stipend for that. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. That's yeah. great. When did uh, SU start the master's in GIS management? We started that in 2007, so we're, we're actually in our eight, eighth year of doing it. And I understand that it also has an online component. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. Uh, a, a primary part of our, uh, our major is that we are, we're focusing on people who are already in the GIS field, uh, working professionally. Mm -hmm. So to, to accommodate those kinds of students, we knew that we had to have an online component uh, to it. Can you tell us how this has evolved? Yeah, um, again, we, we really wanted to focus on professionals in the field. And uh, we were partially online, but we were also had a, a component where the students came to Salisbury University for four weeks. And, and that worked out really nicely as far as a cohort getting to know one another. Mm -hmm. But it made it very prohibitive to people who had full-time jobs, or it was just hard to take that right. much time off, especially since we're getting students from all over the country, and, and actually we're getting international students. So what we've recently done is evolve the program so that it's now a rolling application and it's 100% uh, online. So a person does not have to leave their job for a time period to then come here to take classes. So they can start any time? That's correct, yeah. Oh, that, that's, yeah. Very, that's a great advantage of online. What are some of the other elements that make the program unique? What's unique is that this program focuses on the management of geographic information science. Uh, most programs focus on the technical aspects of the discipline, and, and that's mm -hmm. what we do in our undergraduate program. But what, we, what uh, the discipline had identified was that for many years, projects were failing. As more and more people were, were starting to use geographic information, uh, these projects weren't very successful. And, and one of the reasons was there was a lack of management skills on how to manage data, the technology, uh, budgets, uh, staff. So we felt like that was a real niche that we could, we could step into and provide that kind of service so that way people would be graduating with degrees that are exclusively focused on how to manage these larger geographically based projects. Oh, that's interesting how that yeah. evolved. Who is the program actually designed for and who can enroll in it? The program is designed for working professionals. A lot of them are the people who are kind of in their mid-career and they want to go to the next level, mm -hmm. but they don't have the management skills, right? They were good technicians at one time. So the program is really designed to help those people make the transition from being a good geographic information scientist to now being a manager of projects and people within that field. Although we do have some people who come out of their undergraduate program into ours, but that goes back to our ESRGC conversation. Mm -hmm. A lot of our students who, who come into the program locally here have worked for a year at the ESRGC, so they've had some professional work experience before joining the program. 
So how can someone benefit from this program? There's a couple of ways that we see the benefits. One is they, they get the skills to learn how to actually manage geographic information. Um, the second thing is uh, for a lot of them, having that degree enables them to get the promotions they've been actually looking to, to obtain. So we've heard some stories from students that uh, because they finally got their master's in managing these uh, geographic information science projects, they then got a raise that was pretty much equivalent to the cost of tuition. So within a year, they've paid for their, their program. So, That's great. So they, they now have a better chance at succeeding in what they do. But secondly, the thing that we really want to make sure of is that they have the, the credentials that would enable them to apply for different jobs in management mm -hmm. or obtain raises within their own uh, career path uh, because they have this additional skill. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about how what you're saying pertains to almost any field. So, for example, I'm in the jewelry industry. Now, just because I'm a jeweler doesn't mean I can manage a business. Right. And, and that's what I, I was talking earlier about going and feeling like I'm operating from a vacuum in management. Yeah. I, I would love to have an MBA just so I would get those fundamentals that I, I think I never got. I don't know that I'm going to do it at my age. but <laughs> well, well, that's the big joke, right, is that, that when you get really good at something, they eventually promote you beyond your... Oh, I, I've been Peter Principal, yeah. yes, throughout so, my life. So I think that's where we are able to help these students uh, go into an environment where they, they were good technicians, but now they have really good skills to be able to manage these projects. I think that's fantastic. Um, how long does it take to complete the program? There, the, the program is designed to be completed in two years as mm -hmm. a traditional degree, although we also have designed it to be completed in one year. This is really important back in 2007, 2008 during the, the recession where people didn't have the money to spend and they just wanted to get it done quickly. Mm -hmm. um, most people go with the two-year um, option, but there are some that will complete it in one year. We, we have probably half to 25% to half of our students will complete it in one year. It's a grueling year, it's, and for a lot of them, they, they look back and they say it's kind of a lost year. But at the end of the day, they got their, their master's degree in one, one year. Right, and you say they can recoup the cost quickly, so yeah, that's, that's great. Right. Is there a deadline for enrolling? No, we have a rolling, uh, an, a rolling admission at this mm -hmm. point. So students can enroll at, at any time, and then we can f figure out the best semester to insert them into the program. Gosh, um, how many how may our viewers now get more information on this program? The best way is to just go to our website uh, and at salisbury.edu slash geography, and from there there will be links to the Masters of GIS. Well, I've learned something. I didn't even know about this field. So thank you for thank being you. with me here today. Thanks. And now here's a look at more activities scheduled for the campus in April.
Finally, here to tell us about the new online Master of Social Work is coordinator Karen McCabe. So welcome, Karen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So glad to have you here. I appreciate it. Now let me understand this. I understand that you have offerings for both the undergraduate and graduate programs in social work in other states, is that right? Or across this state and in Europe, Correct. is that right? Correct. Yeah, we actually in 2006, 2007 started doing satellite campus, um, different sites across Maryland for Hagerstown, Chesapeake, um, recently just Southern Maryland, and then Cecil. Uh, and then just last year, March of last year, mm -hmm. we started in conjunction with the Department of Defense and UMUC doing a program over in Europe for military service members as well as their dependents. Oh, that's so they're great. Able to take so they can take classes while someone's serving the Absolutely. families of the servicemen. That's, yep. that's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. That's a good way to use their time. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So why did you decide to go fully online with the MSW? Well, a number of reasons. I think that it does provide more opportunities for a greater number of people. Mm -hmm. um, some folks that maybe aren't near a satellite site. Um, also opening it up to some other states. It, it just gives, you know, more potential for, for people to take that program. Um, and also, you know, we were, we were doing a lot of that already with the Germany program, with the mm -hmm. satellites. We have a lot of online courses already, so it was just a, a good progression, again, to offer it to more people. And how do students who enroll in this benefit from having this particular degree? A couple of things that, that it really helps them with. Number one, it's a professional program. Mm -hmm. So there's a licensing exam afterward that, that they can take and then be licensed, um, you know, and then go out and practice as a clinical therapist or substance abuse, um, you know, what have you. So mm -hmm. that's one benefit. And then the other piece is that, again, it just allows them to, you know, be in their own environment and take the courses. Mm -hmm. What kinds of new students do you think you're going to attract with this program? I think the beauty of this is that it is open to folks from diverse backgrounds. You don't necessarily have to have an undergraduate degree in social work to oh. take this program. Um, you could have a degree in psychology, you could be an accountant, um, and decide that, you know, I want to do a master's in social work. So they're, they're eligible as long as they've already completed an undergraduate degree. Huh. So what is involved in the coursework? It's, it absolutely mirrors the program that we have on campus and, and the satellite mm -hmm. programs now. So they're doing um, the human behaviors, the research, the practice courses so that they learn to work with individuals and families and groups mm -hmm. and, and, and repeat those same, those same types of classes. I understand that they also have to have some field work. Mm -hmm. What's that like? It's actually an opportunity for them to do an e internship. And the beauty of this is that because they're spread out and in different areas, um, they can go to an agency right within their community and, and do their internship there. So they have, don't have to do it at Salisbury, wherever they are? Correct, absolutely. Okay. No residency requirements. Everything's online. Oh, that, that's great. So because of these field experiences, I understand you're limited to just some states. Is that correct? It's correct. I mean, and right now we're, we're starting small in terms of just regionally. So mm -hmm. West Virginia, Virginia, of course, Maryland, um, Pennsylvania, and to, to branch out in that way. Oh, okay. Um, and that's the plan is to include more states eventually? Uh, hopefully, I would assume that uh -huh. would, would be uh, in the works. And are SU social work programs accredited? Absolutely. Actually, mm -hmm. the, the main campus has been accredited since 1976. Uh, and then the rest of the programs, like the satellite sites and then even the online program now, um, we received accreditation prior to initiating those. Mm -hmm. So it's fully accredited by it's CSWE, is the Council on Social Work Education. Okay. Now, uh, when can you apply? And for how long? Okay, the application actually is, is still open. It's mm -hmm. open until uh, April 15th, so tax day. While you're prepping for Uncle Sam, you can do your essays and get them ready, but the, the deadline is April 15th. Okay, so it's not, a, fall. It's not a rolling uh, Correct. application. Correct. You have to get that in by April 15th. Yeah, and we're actually, because for this first year, this program that we're starting for fall, we're mm -hmm. going to do a cohort of 20. So there'll be 20 students that are accepted for fall and move through the program. And then next fall, we'll actually, you know, include more. Right. And now, how can our viewers get more information about this enrollment process? They actually can, again, go to the salisbury.edu slash social work. Go to that. That's our homepage. Uh, and there's a link there that they can go right to the, the online program and then the application, they can click right there. It's actually um, the first 20 applicants that are completed will actually also have their application fee waived. 
Oh, that's that's yeah, good news to anybody out there interested. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for sharing this. This is an exciting program. Absolutely. That's yes. great. Thank you. I know you're happy to be involved. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. And now here's a look at more activities scheduled for the campus in April. You know, all three of these sound like career-friendly programs. I hope many of our viewers and their friends and relatives from afar take advantage of the excellent new opportunities online. I'd like to thank my guests, Yvonne Downey, MBA Program Coordinator, Dr. Art Lembo, Geography and Geosciences Faculty, and Karen McCabe, Online MSW Coordinator. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University On The Air. Thank you for watching.